Ghosts and Goblins was released in the arcade in 1985 and was ported to several consoles, including the NES, a year later. You play as Arthur, a knight who must rescue the princess Prinprin, who was kidnapped by Satan, although the characters' names aren't revealed until later entries in the franchise. It's a side-scrolling platformer where you travel through graveyards, caves, and castles, slaying zombies, ghosts, flying demons, and various other shit the like. You start out with a javelin you can throw at these enemies. They travel straight and have a moderate rapid rate. They're a solid garden variety weapon. You can grab weapon upgrades throughout the game, although strangely, two of them are significantly worse than the default weapon. These culprits in question are the flames and axes, both of which travel in an unwanted arc pattern. They don't have a whole lot of distance, they're weaker than the damn javelins, and you can only fire two at a time. The javelin you can toss three. This is a real ball buster when you're surrounded, especially with the flames which cause a little ball of fire to flare up a bit after it hits the ground, and you have to wait for it to die out before you can fire the next shot. It's frustrating. The axes aren't any stronger than the flames, but they at least travel through enemies after the connecting, making it possible to kill two birds with one axe. And you don't have to wait as long between shots, thanks to the fact that the axe doesn't conjure up a wildfire. The daggers are much better than either of these upgrades. They travel straight just like the javelins, but they're faster and you can throw them more rapidly. Last but not least is the cross, which is really designed like a shield, but I digress. It's a pretty kick-ass weapon and it can block projectiles. One thing about the weapons though is that you can only carry one at a time. If you pick up a shitty weapon, you're stuck with it. And if you die, even continuing after a game over, you're stuck with that weapon until you find a new one. There are quite a few items in the game, but most of them only award you with points, which is useless in this game. Because even if the points would award you with an extra life, it wouldn't matter because you have unlimited continues and you can actually start off at the most recent checkpoint every time you continue, essentially giving you infinite lives. However, that's one of the few bones that this game dishes out to you. It's otherwise a brutally difficult game. And it's not even one of those one-hit death games. You get two hit points. After the first hit, you'll lose your armor and be humorously left in your skivvies and then the second hit turns you to bones. What makes this game so tough is, well, several things. The aforementioned lack of hit points leave you with a thin margin for error, which is challenged due to the often tenacious enemies, who sometimes gang up on you and make it so that you have to execute perfectly, which is hard enough as it is when the controls aren't very good. You have a very specific jumping arc, which you can't steer in midair. Plus, there's a delay when you try to jump or fire. And not only are power-ups hard to come by, but you can pick them up by accident after slaying an enemy, as they leave power-ups behind, forcing you to watch for this shit every time you kill something so you don't pick up something that sucks. But you don't want to slow down too much because you have a time limit, which varies in amount from stage to stage, between a minute and a half to four minutes or so. The levels are short, so you can make it through in the short intervals of time that you're given, but that doesn't take anything away from the fact that the levels are tough as shit. You can crouch and fire, but you can't fire vertically at all, which would come in handy with a lot of these overhead enemies that swoop in at you at an angle. Same thing with climbing ladders. You can't shoot while climbing, and you can't jump off the ladder either. So you're pretty much defenseless while climbing. What a shitty knight this guy is. Now I mentioned that most of the items that you can grab don't award you with anything but points, but one of the exceptions is an extension of the time limit, which is represented by this icon when it flashes. If it doesn't flash, then it's just another point bonus. Who gives a shit? The graphics are pretty good, especially for the time, as this was one of the NES's early games. And the soundtrack fits the spooky atmosphere of the game really well. So you start off with a cutscene of our hero laying in the graveyard almost naked with the princess. Yeah, you can use your imagination as to what's going on here. This pisses off Satan, who swoops in and steals the princess. So Arthur throws on his armor and prepares for a trek to the Devil's Castle. Kill all the zombies that rise out of the ground. They come from the front and the back. When you get to this ladder, climb it. It's easier to avoid the projectiles that the plants up here spit down by taking them head on as opposed to killing the zombies down here while dodging the shit from underneath. When you come back down, one of the zombies will be carrying a gift basket of sorts. Kill him and grab the dagger that emerges from it. Now hopefully you'll hang on to this weapon for as long as you possibly can. Right after that is one of the recurring asshole enemies of the game, the Red Demon who is asleep until you hit him, and when he wakes up, he flies up overhead and swoops down at you and back up again, throwing a projectile at you in the process. He's fast, relentless, and doesn't give you a lot of time to get shots in. Wake him up with a shot and retreat to give yourself some more space, jumping and firing as he swoops. Having the rapid fire of the dagger really helps here. After taking the inexplicably moving piece of land across the water, there's a series of flying knights. 
They hover down and back up across the screen, blindly hoping to get in your way. Simply crouch down or move back a bit and let them pass as you walk underneath them. At the home stretch, you'll find these chicken parmesan and a wrap ghosts that fly by and fire wrenches at you. If you don't kill them, they'll turn around and attack again, shifting their altitude a peg up or down with each pass, so kill them as soon as they're within reach. The boss is this giant monster called a unicorn. Ugh. He'll stomp around and throw a fireball once in a while. Keep your distance, duck to avoid the fireballs, and fire away. Not a whole lot of tactics to defeat him. The key to the gate falls. Grab it, and the stage is officially over. Stage 2 is a pain in the ass. You start out with sending platforms where little demons fly in all directions in an attempt to make contact with you. Give yourself some distance and take them out, and don't try too much ascending while they're in your way. Go up and across, and jump quickly once you land on this platform that drops. A pair of demons will fly out of this window, so be ready for them as soon as they pop out. The next area is where the shit really starts to get frustrating. These goblins patrol the floors and take a lot of hits before they die. And they fire projectiles that are too low to duck under, so give them a rapid string of attacks to prevent them from shooting. The problem is, you've got more of these fucks above you who fire their projectiles down at you if they're right above you. So be sure not to be anywhere near them, or at least get out of the way and be ready for the attacks from the front too. On top of that, you've got this little demon bastard coming at you from behind when you first get here. So kill it first so you're not having to look in three directions. And quickly climb up the ladder, skipping the first one because on top of the attacks these guys impose from above, they're also ladder mongers. It could be a project to lure them away, and this could lead to a crow sneaking up on you while you're doing this. The game is relentless, and it's only the beginning. So when you get the space, slip up here and fire like an animal to take out the goblin. Head up to the fourth floor repeating this process, and head across. Head down the ladders at the end, wait for an opening when these pricks give you enough space, and don't pussyfoot around too much. You do have a time limit to contend with. At the home stretch, you got these moving platforms with crows that fire straight at you from across the way. Time your jumps and fire at the oncoming bullshit. After that is the boss, or bosses, plural, as you battle two unicorns. Fight them one at a time. The other one will wait for the other to be slain like it's a martial arts action film. Apply the same strategy as you did last time and you'll get the key to the gate. You'll get a swarm of bats descending upon you right off the bat, no pun intended, as well as zombies from either side. Crouch down and take out the zombies. The bats will stop short of you and fly off the screen to the sides. Continue onward, taking down the familiar enemies, and when you get to this ladder, climb up and continue. Even if you stay down low, you'll encounter the same enemy, the tower monster. When he's white, he's impervious to your attacks, so you'll have to wait for him to turn red. However, when he does this, he'll spit a ball out of his mouth duck or jump over it, depending on which portion of the tower his face ends up on. Sometimes it's both. Either direction you choose, there'll be zombies bothering you at the same time, but it always feels like there's less up top. Plus, you don't have the rock getting in your way. There's more room to operate up here. There's another one after the split reconnects. After that, you'll enter the blue zone, which is the haven for a long series of battles with the infamous red demons and a few chicken palm ghosts and tower monsters. After gutting through some of this, you'll hit a fork in the road. You can either go left, which will take you up and around where you would go if you continued straight. Take the upper path, but don't go left to get there. Instead, go right and take the first ladder that shows up. If you stay low, you'll have to battle two red demons instead of just the one up here. After taking a long fall, you'll battle one more red demon. And if you have the javelins, you'll want to pick up the flame in the gift basket, unfortunately, because the javelins are ineffective against the next boss for some unearthly reason. Otherwise, jump over it. So, first level was one unicorn, second level was two unicorns. Based on this pattern, we should be battling three unicorns now, right? Nope, instead it's a dragon. He'll alternate between swooping down and back up a few times, then just shifting horizontally across the bottom. Jump over it when he does the horizontal scroll, and back away and crouch so it flies over you and run across. You'll want to stay behind and fire away at all the body pieces, before taking out the head, and you'll get the key to the gate. The early portion of stage 4 has horizontally scrolling platforms, and you have to jump from one section to the next with pits in between. Hop up to the highest one, and jump across to the next section. There are no enemies here other than the clock. When you pass the fourth pit, you've got one of these red demons. Leap onto the floor beyond him and take him out. You've got a lot of room to work with here. After that, you'll hit the bridge. There'll be little blue demons that pop out from the flames below. Blast them. Also, watch out for these fire streams that shoot up from underneath. 
Avoid this flashing statue that gets dropped in front of you. If you pick it up, you'll turn into a frog for a short time. Which really only means that you're prohibited from shooting at that time. Right before the boss is a red demon. Make sure you take out all the enemies on screen before you wake him up. You don't want to be fighting off additional enemies when these demons show up. After taking them out, you'll hit the boss, which is once again the dragon. Nothing different about this encounter. Use the same strategy as last time and grab the key. The fifth stage is a tower spanning 14 floors, many of which with ladders on either side, giving you multiple paths. Also, you won't have any more checkpoints for the rest of the game. Good luck. At the beginning, there's little demons and chicken palm ghosts. Take them out and also crouch to shoot these little skulls in the ground. They're revealed to be skeletons that pop out and dance around from side to side, so kill them before you even have to deal with them. Bypass the first ladder completely and take the one up on the far right quickly followed by the next ladder and take out these frogs. Jump the gap here and take out the skull on the ground. If you had taken the lower path, you'll find it a bitch to climb up here and time it right so you can get up here without taking a hit. Continue and climb the next ladder and jump over the axe here. You don't want it, even if you have the flames. I'll explain later. There's a demon after climbing the next ladder. Don't bother with him and climb the next one to the left. There'll be a goblin asshole on the floor above you. Wait for him to give you an opening and take him out, and then do the same for the next one, but bypass him instead of trying to fight him on the short ledge. There'll be another one on the floor above. You'll have to take him out too, and ride the platform across the way. Climb and kill the goblin that lingers up here, and on this gap, wait for the chicken palm ghost to pop out before jumping, or you'll get smacked in the face. The home stretch is more forgiving. Nothing but a handful of chicken palm ghosts up the next four floors, and it's on to the boss, Satan. Even though he kidnapped the princess, he's not the final boss. He fights similar to the red demons, staying up high and swooping down and firing off a projectile, but he's actually slower and easier to deal with. Who to thunk it in this game? The problem is, the axes don't do anything. I don't know if they take forever in a day, or if they're just ineffective completely like the javelins are with the dragon, but they don't seem to work. Extra emphasis on why you don't want to grab the axe earlier in the stage. Jump and fire when he swoops down, crouch so he passes over and try to get a few hits on his way back. It's similar to the red demons. Once you take him out, you'll get your key to what is effectively the final stage. It's a short level, but it's grueling, as it's essentially a gauntlet of the game's bosses. You start with a series of dancing skeletons under the ground. Wipe them out along with the chicken palm ghosts in the area. There's a javelin in the gift box by the first ladder. Grab it only if you don't have the dagger already. And after climbing it, the gauntlet begins. First it's the unicorn. Kill him the same way as before and climb the ladder. The dragon is next, but you have a smaller space to work with. The cross will drop at the start of the battle. Grab it, it's important. Give yourself some distance and unleash. Keep in mind that if you die with the shield, you're going to have to grab the javelin before the fight with the unicorn, as he's immune to it for who the hell knows why. And of course you're going to need the shield when you fight the dragon, because the dragon is immune to the javelins. Head up the ladder and head left. Climb the next three ladders and head right, ignoring the red demon to the left. There's a flame on the ground here by the dancing skeleton. Blast him out of the way and jump over the flame. You don't want that shit. The next ladder leads to a goblin and a red demon. If you climb up while the goblin's on the right side, you can blast him, but you don't want to wake up the red demon with the shot that passes through him from the rapid fire. As if it's not hard enough to time this shit, right? Back up a couple steps so you have the room to not hit the red demon, and hopefully you didn't back up too much so you don't wake up the sleeping skeleton. Blast the goblin, and then the sleeping skeleton skull, and then continue on, and you'll hit the most unforgiving portion of the game probably. Above the ladder is a red demon on the left, a red demon on the right, a goblin, a sleeping skeleton, a chicken palm ghost underneath, and a partridge in a pear tree. There's shit everywhere. First things first, you gotta take out the red demon. Climb up just enough when the goblin's out of the way to wake the demon up, and climb back down to do battle with him alone. Kill him quickly so the chicken palm ghost doesn't get in the way of it. Plus the asshole goblin might be raining shit down on you. Then climb up, kill the goblin and the dancing skeleton, and move on. Avoiding the axe that tries to tempt you. Climb the next ladder, and continue going up the next two, bypassing the red demons. Now you're at the boss, two satans. This is similar to the tag team of unicorns where you battle them one after the other and the boss is otherwise the same. This isn't the final boss either though, as you'll grab the key and move on to the top floor of the tower and battle the devil, who looks like a fucking muppet. 
I guess Satan, or the twin Satans, that is, are the devil's right-hand man, or men. Or left and right-hand men, respectively, I don't know. So this boss should be the biggest pain in the ass of all time, right? Well, this game continues to confuse, as the devil is easy as shit by Ghosts and Goblins standards. All he does is send fireballs at a downward angle, and walk back and forth. It's quite basic. Just stay as far away as possible, jump over any fireballs, and unleash the cross shield into his head. It's the only weapon that works against him. Another reason why it's important to grab it. After defeating him, you'll discover you haven't really even beaten the game. This room is an illusion divasut by Satan? What? This is terrible translation, and there's probably a band called Devasut because of this. So you have to go through the entire game again from the beginning, I shit you not. After you finish the game the second time, you get the real ending where you save the princess and get another terrifically bad English translation. So that was Ghosts and Goblins. Yeah, it has its flaws, and although it hasn't aged terribly well, it does still have its charm. Even though it's frustrating as hell, it is rewarding to finish the game, good ending or not. Not to mention that this was 1986. There weren't a lot of games as deep as this yet. Certainly not with satanic references and fucking in a graveyard. So this certainly paved the way for the mature themes of games we see today. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.